Welcome to So You're Thinking of Filing a Lawsuit. Please note that the information contained in this workshop is purely information and should not be relied upon for your particular situation. Each piece of information contained in this workshop has many exceptions, so you should research your legal issue before deciding on what actions to take or consult with your own attorney. The attorney leading this workshop is not your lawyer, but is a neutral person who does not represent any party. There is no attorney-client relationship created between you and this attorney. You should consult with your own attorney if you would like personalized advice or strategy. The Office of Self-Help is not responsible for the outcome of your case. We're going to begin with an overview of the court system. The role of the judiciary, the court system, is to make decisions for people. There are two types of state courts in California. There are trial courts, 58 in California, one in each county. There are also appellate courts. There are two types of cases that are heard in these courts. There are civil cases and criminal cases. Today we're going to talk about civil cases. Before you file a case, there are a few things that you should think about. First, you want to think about who it is that can sue and who can be sued. You also want to think about when is the right time to sue, where is the place to sue, and what you need to do before you file. You should also consider using alternative dispute resolution, which we will talk about later. Let's begin with who can file a case. The person who files a case is the plaintiff. Who can be a plaintiff is a common question. A plaintiff can be an individual person who's over 18 years old, or a plaintiff can be an entity, like a corporation, a business, or a partnership. No matter what, the person who is the plaintiff needs to be what the court calls the real party in interest. The real party in interest is the person who has a cause of action. Many people wonder, what is a cause of action? A cause of action is a case's legal merit. There are two typical sources of a cause of action. One is a violation of an existing code or law. The second is any act or failure to act that violates California common law. Let's look at an example of a cause of action. Every cause of action is going to have certain elements to it that must be proven to win in a trial. Those elements also must be written in your complaint when you begin a case. The example we're going to look at is breach of contract. Breach of contract has four elements to the cause of action. First, you would need to prove that a contract was formed. Second, you would need to prove that you had performed your required actions under that contract. Third, you would need to show that there was a breach by the other party or a failure of their meeting their obligation. And finally, you would need to establish that you had suffered damages as a result of the other party's breach. The next question you may look at is, who can be a defendant or who can be sued? Similar to a plaintiff, a defendant can be an individual person or an entity. When you're naming a defendant, you want to be careful and name them correctly, depending on the type of defendant they are. For example, if you are naming an individual person as a defendant, you want to name them by their full name. If you're naming an entity, it's going to depend on the type of entity that you are naming. If you're naming a business, you can place the name of the owners of that business as your defendant. If you're naming a corporation, you'll want to use the exact name of the corporation as they have filed. When you are thinking of who to name as your defendant, you may need to do some work to locate or identify that defendant. There are a couple of resources available to help you do this. If you have an old address for the defendant, you can use the U.S. Postal Service to see if they have a change of address on file. 
If you have an old phone number for the defendant, you can use a reverse phone directory to look up their name. If you have a name or an address, you may be able to use tax assessor's records in your local county. If you are suing a partnership or a business with only one owner, you can find the names and contact information for those owners at your county clerk's office. Continuing with locating a defendant. You can locate defendants in different ways depending on the type of defendant you're trying to name. For example, if you're trying to name a corporation, you can find out the corporation's name and their agent for service through a website organized by the California Secretary of State. There are also paid internet searches that can help you find individuals and other entities. A common question that people think about before filing a case is, when should I file my case or when should I sue? You have to file your claim within a certain time limit called the statute of limitations. Each cause of action is going to have a different time limit assigned to it. The statute of limitations is what determines whether or not a court can hear and make a decision in your case. If you do not file your case within the statute of limitations time limit, you will lose your case automatically, no matter how strong your case is. On the slide, you will see that I have listed some examples of time limits for different types of cases with different causes of actions. But please be aware that these are merely examples. You should not rely on these for your own situation. There are many exceptions, and the timelines are very strict. So if you have any questions about your, your statute of limitations, please consult with an attorney or research your statute of limitations. Another thing you will want to think about before you, you file your case is, have I tried everything else? Before you file in court, the court wants to make sure that you have exhausted your pre-filing remedies. What that means is, the court wants to make sure that you have tried all your other options before you filed a case in court. This comes up a lot in two particular types of cases. One is cases about contracts. Many contracts have a part in them that says you must, for example, mediate before you can file a case in court. Another common place where this comes up is claims against a government agency. Typically claims against a government agency must be filed with the agency before you file in court. When we talk about exhausting your pre-filing remedies, you must take these steps before filing your case in court. If you do not, the defendant can note this to the court and the court may dismiss your case in order for you to go and complete the action that you were supposed to do before filing your case. 